Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 175 of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. I'm Kier, your host. With me on the show today are my co-hosts, Emerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? This week, the team reviews Spider-Man, followed by movie television and video game news. If you have not seen the review of the week and would like to avoid spoilers, check the show notes for the timestamp so you can still hear our news sections. Now on to our review of the week. Spider-Man centers on student Peter Parker, played by Tobey Maguire, who, after being bitten by a genetically altered spider, gains superhuman strength and the spider-like ability to cling to any surface. He vows to use his abilities to fight crime, coming to understand the words of his beloved Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. I'm going to explain our rating system. On this show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love, but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. All right. Uh, uh, Emerson, you want to go first? Sure. So I give this a win. Um, it has been so many years since I last watched this movie and since I last watched any of these original Spider-Man movies anyway. And so I remembered some stuff, but I was absolutely blown away how fun it was to watch. I really liked seeing the uh like spider-man becoming spider-man which i feel like i haven't seen in so long um uh, i really enjoyed the acting i enjoyed the story i enjoyed the pacing i'm going to talk about some specifics of what i really like that this movie did and why i really like it but it's an absolute win for me um and i'm so glad we went back to watch this all right everett hell yeah i'm gonna give this a win as well this is like the epitome of a 2002 superhero movie. However, unlike Daredevil, which we've also seen, which also which came out like a year after this, its goofiness actually makes the movie, in my opinion, much better instead of cringier. Tobey Maguire, in my opinion, is probably one of the best uh, people to play Spider-Man, even though I still think he's, I don't know, kind of awkward and weird, but I feel like that helps play the character a little bit better. Um, the suit design is great. The score is great. Um, the acting is a little questionable in, in parts, but I have specific instances for that that I want to talk about. I have a lot of notes for this movie, um, so I really want to talk more when we get into spoilers. Yeah, it's a win for me. All right, it's a, it's a big win for me also. Um, I, I didn't feel like the goofiness of it really hurt the movie, except for a certain part, a certain uh, couple parts, but... Uh, compared to Daredevil, Daredevil is just bad. It, it, it's not like the goofiness was like holding it back. It's just a bad movie. This has goofiness, but it's also a really good movie. Um, uh, there's yeah, I I like pretty much every aspect. I do have a couple like things that don't really make sense here and there, but like ever said, the score. I also felt like the acting was pretty superb by almost everybody. Um, Kristen Dunst gets a lot of hate, but I, I actually think she's fine. Um, and you know, William Defoe plays it over the top a little bit in some scenes, but that's part of it. Uh, this is a post Batman world, like post Batman and Robin Batman forever. So, uh, yeah, I, I give it a win and let's move on to spoilers. So I have a bunch of notes also, so I'll just like start and then you guys jump in. Uh, one of the first things that really stands out to me is the teacher and the field trip. He's actually yeah, like, he's he's really funny. Very young. He's also very young. That's what the, I, I thought he was a student at first. Yeah, well, everyone in that class is an adult. It's really funny. Yeah, they don't look like. I mean, it's weird because they look younger than how they look now, so they seem young, but they're also like a lot older than a high school kid. Um, but the professor, not only is he young, but he's also like the whole time he's just showing up and like talking in that hushed voice. Like, what are you guys doing? The whole, <laughs> like every, every time he pops up and he just keeps showing up behind them, yeah. like again and again, I forgot how he's funny like, we're going to have was. a little chat about you like paying attention your entire presentation. Yeah. And then he like says they're going to fail the course. Like they're in high school. Yeah. You could fail the class, but the, like you can't just fail them out of nowhere like that. 
like oh you it's you don't hilarious. get to come to class anymore like what <laughs> um there is um there's something i do want to bring up like since it's the first thing that you hear in this movie i think that opening monologue is complete garbage toby mcguire speaks the entire thing flat as hell and uninterested and that's like one of my only gripes about this movie <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned, I think that happens in all three of these films. I don't you, think that you have a better. problem with people's voices. That's yeah, how you, you, you really like okay. the Monopoly Man. No, 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 like. no, no. no. <laughs> Fuck the Monopoly Man. But tell me, you, you guys can't tell me that you hear that opening monologue of people going. I you didn't want to know who I am. With it. You sure you want to know? If anyone I've told re- you that I, I, I lived kinda- a happy life, they were lying. It's like a narration, though. It's not supposed to have like. A bunch yeah, of, it's like the first like, thing you hear in the movie, and it, it does not sound <laughs> exciting at all. It just sounds like he's reciting I, off the script. I, I just I didn't register it. No, I think it it works because it sets a specific tone, which is like the kid from the neighborhood telling like a wholesome story. It gives you that impression, and you think like it's going to be him on the school bus, and like being a happy kid or whatever. And then it, then you see the the twist. It, like it specifically sets up that tone. And then you see that he's the loser, and it's not going to be that exactly that kind of story. Although he still has that like 1950s heart and soul, which he does. Like he's very old fashioned in so many ways. Mm. Um, so I thought that the tone was perfect. You keep talking about how flat his voice is, and I don't know. I don't know what you like. What do you want him to be like? Hey Everett guys, it's me. Dude. <laughs> yeah, Everett prefers the voices to be curvy, not well, flat. I, I don't know. Like if Peter Parker's in high school, he's I, he at the very least he's supposed to be a little bit like okay. peppy. That brings something up that I'm going to mention in a second. Peppy. But beforehand, beforehand, yeah, yeah he's like he's a kid. I think it would be worse if he had emotion. Because what if he was like. Like he said, like, yo, guys, it's Peter here. I'm here to tell you about my life and the city and how it all got turned upside down. <laughs> like, I yeah. think maybe, maybe I'm just, Bella. I think maybe I'm just used to like the other versions of Spider-Man, like Tom Holland. But and, does he, Garfield, does he but... do voiceovers with like a lot of emotion in those movies? Well, I, I think Andrew Garfield does. I know Tom Holland doesn't, but but Garfield is the, widely agreed to be. Yeah, garbage. both of them play the character so much differently than Tobey Maguire. Okay, I think well, this wait is a the minute, best version of Peter. I, I okay, I'm, so I'm, I'm I'm on par with agreeing with you. I'm, I'm just saying here. it's different. This is something I wanted to get into, so now's a great time to just talk about it. Okay. Well, I, I, I have one like... more thing I wanted to mention before, like we All lose right, track. Go is, ahead. Um, the last thing I want to say is that opening sequence where he's running dude you in the the opening sequence what the fuck bro Uh, no 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 it's not bad those (laughs) people are so cruel to that poor man like my god saw a bit of yourself in there like peter parker gets the shit bullied out of him in like the worst fucking way like my god yeah you know though um like it's kind of interesting watching this movie now because like they fat shamed that kid yeah i guess because he's true. like eating the donut and he's like i'd even settle for him it's like well what's wrong with him other than he's clearly extremely obese and that's yeah. it which I, I i have no problem with i'm just saying that's pretty funny because i don't know if you could do that nowadays <laughs> it's clearly I mean, saying like to do it with uh what's his name in far from home what, Ned? Ned? They don't make yeah, like, fat jokes out of well, his remember when he's like if he doesn't swallow his tongue he'll be okay like yeah, but that was I because guess. he was like uh, like knocked out. I I think it's meant to be kind of like a fat joke. At least that's the way I read it. Is that like? Oh, that uh, yeah, that could go either way. This one's definitely like I'd even settle for being the fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> at, or at the okay. very least, he seems like he has special needs or something. I agree. Yeah, but I just, <laughs> okay, I just wanted to say. Okay, I think what's interesting is this, and I wrote this in my notes. It's refreshing to see Spider-Man that's Spider-Man about Spider-Man. And the reason I bring that up is Tom Holland. I like Tom Holland as Spider-Man, but I feel like Tom Holland is really defined by the fact that he's in this larger universe. We first see him with all the other Avengers. And, like, he has good villains and his stories are interesting, but a lot of his story is kind of carried, in my opinion, by the fact that he's part of this universe with all these other characters. Whereas Tobey Maguire, he kind of stands on his own. Yeah, like, well, you're absolutely right. But here's why I give him a break on it, because 
Amazing Spider-Man 2 tried to hit the same notes as this movie. Or sorry, The Amazing Spider-Man tried to hit the same notes as this movie while also like not hitting them, but still somehow hitting them. <laughs> and it was like a Peter-centered story. And basically, it's been done. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But then the other thing I want to talk about, so Amazing Spider-Man and uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man, we both see them in high school. This movie starts, he's at the end of high school, and he actually graduates from high school in the movie. Yeah. So maybe you guys can explain this to me. Why Why are so many of these Spider-Man stories p- obsessed with putting him into high school? Because I like that he was in high school, um, and then he got out of high school that, in this. That's like that was the start awesome. of his career as Spider-Man is he, when he was in high school. Yeah, but well, no, but that's, that's not why. The, so uh, I agree. I think college Peter is way more interesting because he can actually like do things during the day. Yeah, he has freedom and yeah. agency <laughs> and ability. <laughs> college Peter is way better. Um the reason everyone keeps going back to high school is because of the I, I want to say it's the unlimited oh, I have the book um, what is it called uh, yeah ultimate spider-man ultimate spider-man is the comic run and that is like said to be the best version of the com best comic story best l- run of spider-man ultimate spider-man he's definitely like a kid he's in high school It's very much the MCU uh, version of Spider-Man. So that is where everyone has been saying, remember, this is just a response to these movies. So you had had this movie where he goes in college. Then you had Amazing Spider-Man 2 where everyone's like, make the ultimate version. And they still kind of made him like a high school kid, but basically he's an adult in every other way. Um, (laughs) And then so it's a response to that. Also, it hasn't really been done. So... Uh, I think that that is, I, I think that's also the right move for the MCU. But I would like to see him become college Peter. Well, I'm just saying the movie, like he, think about the things he does in this movie that would make very little sense if he was in high school. And you you get to kind of a higher form of like drama, so like the drama in this movie. There, there's sort of not a love triangle, but there's like love interests and there's like oh like this person and this person's dad i think that so much of the drama and like the what would be called side plot is elevated because he's an adult not in high school and the people he's dealing with are adults not in high school right and you almost forgive the movie for having them be in high school and look so much older at the beginning because it does jump through time yeah, and he's trying to get a job, and Mary Jane's trying to get a job, and the, like it's hard, and you've got the rich, like um, like Harry Osborne, and it just it works. <laughs> I never noticed how much time actually passes, but you assume his graduation was in June, and they go all the way to Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh. But yeah, so I we were talking. Do you guys think this is the best version of Peter? Uh, if not the best, I think tied for best with Tom Holland. Because Andrew Garfield, I think, is garbage. I need, I, I'm gonna reserve judgment. I would say that this, I like this version of Peter more than um, Homecoming Peter. I want to see the like second movie review the second movie to compare him because I do like where uh, Tom Holland's Peter starts to go, but I think I have to. I would. I think I enjoy this more than Homecoming. I I, I kind of want to watch this again. <laughs> so I, I have a couple things to say. Yeah. Um, as soon as I started watching this, Jade is like, oh, Tom Holland's so cute. And then she saw I was not watching this version. And then she came and took my Homecoming Blu-ray and started watching it. And she was like blaring the fucking theme song as I was trying to watch this movie. So I had to like close my door <laughs> because she thinks Tom Holland is like, and those movies are way more fun. I firmly think that this trilogy, Spider-Man 3 included, is so far better than anything we've seen. Uh, as spider-man in the mcu uh i have some controversial opinions i think uh and i guess i guess we've already been over this but um mcu spider-man peaks in civil war and hasn't really like i'm talking about just spider-man not like oh he fought with the avengers that not that but the fact that like just him as a character i think he peaks in civil war and has not really achieved that level again um He basically plays second fiddle to Tony Stark in every movie, even the one where Tony Stark is dead. Um, (laughs) But really, he does. No, I um, agree. I agree 100%. This movie, this Peter has, like, I know it's like kind of a classic character. He very much has 
a sweet heart and soul. I don't even like Tobey Maguire anymore after like the Molly's game revelation where he like stole the poker game from her. And, you know, if you watch that movie, you can read it's, it was Tobey Maguire that I think Michael Sarah was playing. Um, like do do a little research on him. He's definitely like, like a drug addict kind of like asshole celebrity. Um, he was, as a young person, I guess he was like in movies. I didn't really know him, but he ran around with Leonardo DiCaprio a lot. And like Leonardo's career kind of took off and his kind of didn't until Spider-Man. Um, oh, yeah. Weren't they like in The Great Gatsby together? I remember watching that. In high well, school. that was way after. Yeah, that was way. So like he really hasn't been in much since Spider-Man except for The Great Gatsby. Unless and- there's things that I'm missing. No, I agree. But one of the Kia, I think you're absolutely right. I would say that like I like some of the villains in Tom Holland's like I love Michael Keaton. I love Jake Gyllenhaal. I like some of like the story arcs, but Spider-Man versus Spider-Man, Tom Holland, he is second fiddle. He exists in this universe and he's kind of playing off these other people and his interactions with the villains are cool. But this movie was a Spider-Man only movie and you really have to like sit with the character and the character is stronger. Yeah, I, I really like the sweetness to him. Tobey Maguire plays it really well. Um, mm-hmm. I prefer this version, like this like Boy Scout, essentially. Um, not that Tom Holland is a bad guy, but I swear Tom Holland's Spider-Man has no personality other than, oh my God, oh, I can't believe I'm, I'm talking to Tony Stark right now. And oh my God, this is happening. And oh my God, that's happening. Like that's literally yeah, how, what he, how he sounds. I'm smart. I'm a nerd. I'm like, eh. Yeah, right. Um and I, I would say, like, what is Tom Holland's Peter Parker's personality? And that I don't think he has one because he exists in contrast to the people he's around. There's so much when spectacle, he, yeah. Ex- mm-hmm. Like, when he's fighting Michael Keaton, he's terrified because Michael Keaton is scary. When but he's that's, fighting his, that's Jay- his thing, though. Isn't he terrified? What the hell? Sorry, that um, was my alarm for our original time. Isn't he terrified um, um, in... That's that's like basically his shtick is like I'm scared. Yeah, but like but even like like when he's strong, it's even in contrast to the character he's against. Like he ends homecoming by being like I'm strong, I beat the vulture, I'm stronger than you. Okay? And then he starts uh far from home being scared again. And like yeah, it makes sense because you know, you lost your mentor, but once again, it's in relation to Tony Stark, like you said. And then he ends far from home being like I'm strong again even though he's but then at the very end he's terrified again. So it's like <laughs> Yeah, they play the whole yeah. like I'm a kid and this is all too much and that's okay. I've had enough of that. Also, one thing we didn't really discuss was like the MCU moves in a in a certain timeline. He's going to have to be out of high school pretty quick. Soon. Yeah. Because unless w- like the movie is he a sophomore following, in Homecoming? I I I think technically he might be. Yeah, and so you still only have 3 years, so maybe one more high school movie. But if Spider-Man 3 is going to take place immediately after Far From Home, so I guess that's another one. And I don't know like where the rest of the movies how how far ahead they're jumping but and they're getting away with the fact that tom holland has a baby face so like it's too easy much of a to baby face. Yeah. yeah it's easy like to make it like he look he does his face looks like a kid but eventually here like other people are gonna start aging up and it, like he's gonna need the change yeah so anyway yeah. We'll, we can keep comparing it but um uh, one thing when I watch this movie is I can I can't forget that that meme the racist meme, yeah. Where Which he one? goes, uh, so it's like on Xbox when the meme is on Xbox when you hear someone using the N word, and then it's William Defoe when he says yeah. I'm something of a scientist instead he says I'm something of a racist myself. Yeah, yeah, dude. That, that meme was, um... is. Oh, God, I laughed out loud when he said, you know, I'm something of... I've seen, like, you know, I'm something of a retard myself. I'm something of, <laughs> like, a moron myself. There's so many There are ones. so many. I've seen a version of it where it goes, be ashamed of who you are. There are so many memes of, in, from this movie that are just hilarious. So I, I have one that I'll send you guys later. It's of Flash Thompson. It's like that one scene from... Uh, the third Lord of the Rings movie where the ghosts are looking at Aragorn and they're like, we do not suffer the living. And it's just flash Thompson squaring up going, I wouldn't want to suffer me neither. I wouldn't want to okay. suffer me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll send it to you guys. I actually, I actually like that line 
where he says, I wouldn't want to fight me neither. Um, so the spider bite, I thought that the movie really played the spider bite part like pretty seamlessly. Um, yeah. And I loved seeing the transition. We haven't seen that in a while. I forgot about Amazing Spider-Man, but I loved seeing like, okay, he gets the spider bite, he's getting sick, something's happening, then he slowly is figuring out his abilities. Yeah, yeah I remember. I, I think Amazing Spider-Man was basically just him like doing the exact same thing, but not as good. But it was worse, yeah. 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 I remember in Amazing Spider-Man, he like throws a football when everyone sees him and he like dents the football goal and everyone's just like oh that's kind of crazy and like walks away like he literally yeah, bends I, the oh, yeah. it's worse than that he like breaks the backboard of a basketball court and like does like a backflip and he stuff has like his that. own like, cat woman scene basically yeah but, um i was gonna say well we can jump to that part he does have that scene in the cafeteria where he clearly demonstrates like his spider-man abilities and no one seems to recall yeah, or no one like, puts it together. It's I guess they thought like because the the story is going to move on so much before he actually becomes Spider Man. It's going to be months, and you kind of forget about it as a viewer too. You're like, oh yeah, that did happen in the school in front of everyone. Um, if I saw that, I'd probably put it together immediately uh, once I saw Spider Man in the news. Um, you know, um, <laughs> it's it's kind of funny that you bring up the the lunchroom scene. I have it in my notes early on. I wanted to ask you guys that scene where he catches everything on that plate, like what catching Mary Jane, was that real? Yeah. I'm pretty I was sure going to mention real. that it's real. Yeah. That's and impressive. He, he had to times. practice it like a million times. Yeah. Jesus. Um, all right. Going back uh, to the movie pacing that then they, after that museum scene or whatever they're in <laughs> science museum, um, there's the exoskeleton scene where they kind of explain. I didn't realize how well they mirrored, like Peter and, and uh, William Defoe or Norman, they kind of transform at the same time in the movie. Yep. Um, yeah. It's super like, cool. Yeah. I, like I kind of, I forget cause you know, the villain sort of disappears, which I think is a good thing. Like the, their story should be strong, but they shouldn't dominate like the narrative. Unless it's a sequel. Um, because obviously Peter wouldn't transform. But So one thing I noticed is like when Peter's transforming, it's very well directed in terms of the pacing. Like on the bus when that fat kid eats the donut and he eats it right at the perfect moment. And then during this transformation, like as Peter falls off the bed, he also pulls the blanket with him and like the camera follows. Like not that I'm so blown away by these techniques, but this is like... This is like a kind of storytelling that you take for granted where it's so seamless the way everything just transitions. And I, I can't recall any of the scene in the MCU that like plays like that, that like really uses its time so efficiently. Um, everything's so ham fisted. It's always like box one, box two, box three. Like this happens, yeah. that happens, that happens. Um, here it's like he's got the transition he pulls the blanket on him it, it, the camera follows him down it, it's almost like a lot of movies used to be like that and now they aren't they're all just so like they're shot in such a simple cookie cutter way do you guys get what I'm saying? yeah yes. No. 100% because okay this is in my notes as well but there's okay the first half of the movie I looked at this the first hour is literally setting up Peter as Spider-Man while also setting up Norman as the Goblin. Yeah. And you're getting all... And it's so great. Um, it's so great how, like, you get this time with the character. You get to learn about the characters. You get to figure them out. You get to sort of become Spider-Man and become the Green Goblin. And then the second half is just them clashing. And I think that's amazing because so many movies, they'll set up the character either in the first 30 minutes or it'll be like the entire movie and then you never get time to see them really clash except for the last 30 minutes. Right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so his transformation scene, I also, I kind of like the way he wakes up and he has muscles and like his glasses don't work anymore. Yeah, and and there's that joke where he like looks down and he's like, "Very big changes, big change." Yeah, I like the way he I sells that. that. Yeah, I like his personality a lot. He's very a, like sweet and innocent. He that's is. Another, he is uh, in 
contrast to what he is. That's another funny meme I've seen about this movie where he's looking in the mirror at his arms and Aunt May is like, Peter, you okay? He's like, Aunt May, call a veterinarian. She's like, what? Why? He goes, because I got a pair of sick-ass pythons now. Okay. What scene was that? Um, <laughs> it was where he's looking in the mirror after his transformation. He's looking at his muscles. He said, I have all. a pair of pythons? It's it's a meme. I'm talking about a meme. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, and two yeah. for the memes. Yeah, <laughs> definitely the best. The, the best thing we've. Uh, I don't know. You're. I think the funniest meme that's come out of this was the like. I'm something of a retard myself. I love that format. Like the. <laughs> there's some good ones. Um, but yeah, I love that transformation. I also like how he. This movie reminds me, like I like how he's kind of a dick at first when he gets his powers. He's being a dick to his his uncle. He's sort of not a total dick. Like. A yeah. piece of shit, but he's not being a nice dude. But here's then, the thing. Well, yeah, go ahead, finish. I was just going to say, and then you sort of get that. It makes the great power, great responsibility thing. It really makes it click because I feel like that's been memed in the years since like, oh, again, great power, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But this really puts it together where it's like he's sort of not being responsible. Then he makes a bunch of mistakes that lead him to this dark place. And then he realizes, wait a minute. So the, re- the reason that I think resonates with a lot of people is because what he's he's essentially a nice guy. And the reason people are nice is because they have to be. Like I know that's a controversial opinion, but most of the time when you have like – I don't want to call them betas, but like people that usually get put down or bullied or whatever, they're nice only because no one's nice to them. So they like try to be nice. To, to like cross that bridge, right? Of course, you have people that go the other way where they're like, I'm going to be mean because everyone's mean, but Peter's not that type of person. He's a nice guy because that's kind of all he feels like he has to offer. Now he's got some other power and he's trying to go out and be like everyone else and strike out on his own and be a little more bold and like he's, he's going to make a move on Mary Jane now, whereas previously he was like, all he could do was just be like, oh, can I carry your books for you? Like that sort of shit. Now he can actually like impress her and he's going to make a play for it. And that's why he's a little bit more selfish and it costs him. And I really like that lesson. Like when he doesn't let the guy, when he, when he stops, he lets the guy go and it it like shows you his face where he's kind of like smug, like, like where did that change come from? It's because he believes like he can treat people like this. Now he has like a new self-confidence. Um, you don't have to be nice all the time because you don't care if these people like you because you know that they're going to like you because you have all these powers and and whatever. Um, a lot of people are nice simply because everyone treats them poorly. <laughs> um, yep. So anyway, um, one thing about that scene where he lets the guy go, he they do kind of commit that, uh, that sin that Amazing Spider-Man does. First of all, why is there a cop there just like by himself? Is he like getting bribed? I took it as like a security guard, like it was the security guard for the um, for an underground like the, fighting ring. Well, I guess. it didn't seem underground to me. It seemed like it was meant to be like WWE, and if it has an advertisement in the newspaper, it's not that underground. Right, and then so the cop, the guy leaves, and the cop looks at him, at, you know, a young guy, and he goes like, "Why didn't you stop him at close range in a hallway when the guy has a gun?" Like, what do you want him to do? Like, literally, like, remember how Uncle Ben died? Like, is that what you want him to do? To grab <laughs> to grab the pistol, like, right in front of you and shake it until the guy fires? <laughs> um, anyway, so, yeah. Um, I was going to go back. I really like Aunt May also. I know she's, like, the classic old Aunt May. And people no, like she's Marissa good. Tomei. Yeah, she's I, I good. like Marissa Tomei, but I like this version too, Rosemary Harris. Well, it makes sense. It's believable. And also, like, you know, her being kind of frail and, like, she's strong mentally, but, you know, she's an old woman. That adds a lot to the story when Peter's like, oh, shit, this guy knows who I am. Like, you feel like, ah, fuck. Right, right. I feel like I like her more in this movie than I do in the other two. Like, I might be wrong when we eventually watch them, but uh, I think this is definitely my favorite version of her is in this movie. <laughs> She's Did just an old lady. <laughs> I know, but I, I remember like in the Everett's second on movie, the war path. <laughs> I remember like in the second movie, she's like very coarse to him for some reason. And I think, I it's think not I'm remembering for that. For some right. reason, isn't it because she like admits that he was involved in killing uncle Ben? 
Yeah, but I, I remember he he like admits that to her, and he like is in a moment of weakness, saying like I need you to be here and support me, and she just like leaves him there and walks off and just ignores him. Yeah, because of what he just told her. So you don't like her? Is that what you're saying? No, and I'm not saying I don't like her. I'm saying I like her best in this movie. Like she, this is her best performance in all three of the movies. <laughs> okay, but you're talking about the character's actions, and then you're talking about her performance. Are you blaming her for not comforting <laughs> Peter as an actress? N- no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, forget it. Never mind. All right. <laughs> when did they? I uh, just uh, just a quick question because I know I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, how many of the characters from the high school in this movie appear in the second movie? I think only Mary Jane and Harry. Okay, so Flash event he gets recast in the third movie then. Flash is not in the third movie. What you're the hell? Doesn't of, he um, become Venom? You're thinking of no. Eddie Brock. Oh, okay. Yeah, then what I the hell is Flash Thompson? Does he become something? He's a bully, but I think he was also like a Venom in the comics. He's Agent yeah, Venom I'm, in the comics. Yeah, I don't remember okay. who actually became... I think Eddie Brock was the original Venom, but... Eddie Brock was the original Venom, but then... Uh, yeah, that's Topher Grace in the third movie, though. Yeah. Um... So I one thing I think the movie does really well is the pining for MJ. Yeah. Like the way that he's like clearly in love with her and like every you know, time he's showing he's, up where she is, he can't talk. But also like every time he gets close to doing something, she like leaves with someone else. Like she's always interested in other people. Mm-hmm. Um the only part of that is like at the end when she says I love I love you, I don't know if I buy that. Yeah. Um but Anyway, because she definitely doesn't notice him at all for most of the film and, and clearly doesn't see him as like a romantic option. Um, I didn't. What do you guys think about the fight and how he like uses his spidey sense? Because that's kind of one of the fight uh, in, in the school where he against where he does like a triple backflip. Yeah, that's where it like it gets a little goofy. Yeah, dude. Flash um, Thompson dented a motherfucking locker. That's some power um, strength right there. I thought the fight was okay, but I don't know. The whole thing is a bit wonky, and the weird thing is that, like, very quickly they're like, you're a freak. Like, uh, what is really funny is when, when uh, Thompson's, like, buddy goes in and tries to help, and then he's like, all right, you got this. Like, you, you can take it <laughs> after he realizes Peter's kind of kind of tough. Yeah, yeah. And, like, Peter... Um... Like, he almost does too many flips in that one. Like, it's uh, come on. It's too much. Um, yeah. And I don't mind the part where he, like, dodges the hand and, like, looks at it, even though it is cheesy as hell. Um, I don't mind that part either. I do like when he punches him. Dude, he would have, like, broken his sternum with that punch. I yeah. I almost wanted it to be, like, have a small scene where Flash is, like, in the hospital. Since we never see him again anyway, and like Peter can sort of see the beginning of like the consequences of his actions. Like you can't just hit people. I mean, you could have had it where uh, – because there's that one scene at graduation where you can see him break up with Mary Jane from afar. You could have had him like in a neck brace or like on crutches something, or something. Yeah, something that – because he hits him really hard. Um, so he does the scene where – I believe he's like testing out his powers and jumping. You know, the CGI is not great, but it it holds up decently enough. It's 2002. Yeah, it's, fine. it's it's kind of you can excuse it. One of the, I remember one of the biggest laughs in the theater was when he swings and just hits that wall. <laughs> Tally ho. I like it. I like it. Um What do you guys think? I mean, this is a controversial part, but Oh god. The organic web shooters. Um I kind of like I, it. I remember when I was Yeah, Everett. <laughs> I, well, I was going to say, like, uh, the last time I really watched this was when I was younger, and I, I remember not really caring because I wasn't, like, really that big into comics when I was, like, that young. But then, uh, like, as I'm older, I don't really care. Like, I know a lot of people have deals with it, but it's not really that big a deal. So you went from not caring as a child to not caring as an adult? <laughs> well, I didn't notice it as a child. I didn't know that there was something so different about it from the comics, but now that I do, like it really doesn't matter. It's it's unique. It makes the movie stand out on its own a little bit more. 
Um, I like this a lot. I think it's cool. Like, it's cool that he has organic web shooters. It's cool that they're part of him. I always found it kind of weird that he's got, like, a machine on his wrist, and he has to, like... I, I It annoys me when they bring up the plot point of, oh, he's out of webs all of a sudden. It's like, come on. Yeah, that's the only benefit, is that you can, like, suddenly put him in jeopardy because his webs don't work, but... Um, it, it is, it's also weird that he doesn't like a, obtain all the abilities of the spider when he obtains so many of them. Um, I mean, it's better that he doesn't like shoot it out of his ass or something, but, um, <laughs> I, I really don't care. I don't care at all. People get upset because the main, the main benefit is that you could say that he built them himself. Like, Oh, it's his in- ingenuity, but whatever. This movie, to be fair, doesn't really make a lot of sense about how he, like, establishes those powers. Like, why would you ever do that posture with your hand to, like... Well, I like the references. Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. But, like, he's saying Shazam and, like, up, up, and away. Like, it's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, you you kind of have to look past that a little bit. It's okay. Um, I really liked... So let's talk about Kristen Dunst. Like, I think a lot of people feel like she played her kind of flat. And in the comics, she's like, obviously like a total babe movie star. Um, She's very charismatic. Like, you know, she's like the ideal dream girl. Whereas I don't think like in my mind, that's not the girl next door. The girl next door, like is, is cute and all that, but she's kind of got problems like home life. And she's dealing with a lot of the same problems you are. Like I'm, She's not a really famous person. She doesn't have everything going for her. She's. I agree. So Kristen Dunst to me plays this with a little bit of sadness, which I think the script calls for. And I think that's why they cast her probably. Um, and she might have been famous from Bring It On or that might have been after this. I don't remember. But um, I really have no problem with her. I like her better than Zendaya. Who is? I don't dislike Zendaya, but again, what's her personality? Zendaya's I don't think is really supposed to be Mary Jane Watson. She she's only Mary Jane in name. She's not the real <laughs> character. Why why do you say that? Because I don't think she was originally designed to be Mary Jane. Remember they were gonna cast a Mary Jane. I think no. they just tacked that on. I think they she they just made her a different. I character. don't think so. I think they picked like a movie star and made her ugly so that later on they could pretty her up and then she'll be Mary Jane the star. Maybe this one, Kristen Dunn seems a little bit more genuine to me. Right, but people Zendaya, don't like her. I think Zendaya has the same problem that Tom Holland has, where she's kind of not a character. She's like a high school girl. What are you supposed to really do with that? She's a weird much, high school girl. Yeah, you don't have as much room. Like, we get to see, because Kristen Dunn's character is older, we get to see, like, okay, she's got a fucking horrible home life. Then she wants to be, you know, she wants to be an actor, but she can't. I love that scene where she walks out of the diner and she's, like, acting like, yeah, I, I, I'm working. Like, I'm going for an audition. And then the the chef comes Enrique. out and he's like, what the fuck? Yeah, he's, like, yelling at her. And it, it's an embarrassing moment, but I think it's also a moment that, like, is very real. Like, that sucks. I think every one of us could imagine, like, that happening, where, like, someone's like, yeah, da 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 and then, like, come out and you realize, oh, life isn't as quite as good as it appears. Right, right. Um, yeah, I like I like her a lot in this, actually. I think she plays it really well in almost every part. People used to talk about her dead eyes or something. I don't care. Like, I'm not one of those people that's like, if she's not super hot, then I, get her out of here. I, I suspect some of the criticism – I'm assuming the criticism you're talking about was from when the movie came out, right? It's lingered. It's lingered. Uh, well, because I, I suspect a lot of it is probably, you know, these days comic book movies, everybody loves them and everybody thinks they're amazing for the most part. And, like, you can get away with, like, well, it's a comic book movie. Who cares? I suspect – and you have to tell me if I'm right, when these came out, there was more of, like, a, it's a comic book movie and then you start nitpicking it. Um, honestly, this movie took the world by storm. Uh, I think a lot of people loved it. Kristen Dunst was like the main criticism. And then now people like kind of forget it because of the MCU. But, um, this movie was pretty well received, I would say. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so like, I like this idea that he's going to get the car because part of it is like a little bit sketchy. Um, in terms of like, oh, you're going to get her a car so that she thinks, oh, if I date him, I can ride that car. Like he's doing the complete 
wrong thing. Like that's not how you like impress a girl or that's not how you don't want to, you don't want her to date you because of your car, but he doesn't get that. Like it's very relatable. Um, and the whole thing is like, uh, dishonest in a way. Um, yeah. But the other thing that he does is he starts designing his costume and I don't know. I just feel like you would never design that, the, the costume that he has. Like that red uh, and blue one. The, the final version or the yeah, early version? The final. Like, I mean, the early one, like whatever. But the final version, if I was going to be like a spider person, I would probably go with like a black suit because it's, you know. Black spiders, and red. Spiders, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the blue and red or red and blue, whatever. Um, well, yeah. the spider that bit him was blue and red, though. So that's that's where he took the. Uh, I guess he did. I don't know how how well tuned he is to like the spider and where it came from. And but he he looked at it as it crawled away. I guess. Yeah, that does kind of make. I sense. probably wouldn't draw attention to that just because, <laughs> <laughs> like clearly, he, like they something's could wrong. Piece here. together where you got it from and figure out who you are. Maybe you are right that a normal person would never design a suit like that. But you gotta admit that's one of the best Spider-Man suit designs of all time. Like I, I enjoy the raised webbing. I think I prefer the new Tom Holland suit better. I don't know, man. This suit is iconic. It is. Like, yeah, I love it. I, yeah, I I like the black and red too, though. Um, all right. Uh, Ben's speech. I, I I thought the speech is delivered perfectly, and it yep immediately hits the points. And I like how Peter is a kind of a dick and since you know what's about to happen to uncle ben like it's horrible it, yeah <laughs> um bone saw is that macho man randy savage yes it is i'm 95 percent sure i was like he's Wait fantastic a i love him bone saw yeah. <laughs> and a... the announcer isn't that the guy from ash from evil dead who shows up in the yes in it's, movie? it's what's yeah. his name uh I, I forget his name but doesn't he so he's he plays the like play usher in the next one, I think. And yeah, so he I guess he just keeps showing up. And then he plays up. the, the major D in the third one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's the major D. Um, all right. So, uh, what do you think about the guy that rips him off? Like, I, I like that scene a lot. I like how it's done. Why he rips him off, and Peter has no choice. Yeah. Yeah, he says like you didn't do the three minutes. I Bruce also Campbell, think, by the way, was the guy's name. Bruce Campbell, yeah. I yeah. also think Uncle Ben's death is pretty powerful too. Because you don't think he's an idiot like an Amazing Spider-Man where I'm literally like, why did you do this to yourself? Because you don't even see it, right? <laughs> right. So you think he's just he basically just got shot just because he was there, because Peter brought him there, and because Peter let the guy go. On a side note, uh, it'll forever be part of my vocabulary, the phrase... They uncle bend him ever since you said that. I, I forgot where you said it, but that will forever stick in my mind because of that movie. They uncle bend him in reference like they basically made a guy kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> inadvertently. Um, they uncle bend him. Uh, you know, Peter, uh, Toby Maguire crying has been kind of a meme. Um, it's a little distracting, but it doesn't take away from the gravity of the situation, I don't think. <clears throat> well, I mean, what do you want? Like, that's his face. Who looks great crying? I don't know, especially men. I don't know too many men that like, they're like, yeah, that's a handsome crying man. I, I don't know. Everybody looks weird. Um, I tell you what looks worse though is when his in Spider Man Two when he's trying to hold the train together by the webs. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. And he's like constipated. He's got that face on him. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So then we get to see his first swing as he chases the the carjacker. As he chases the guy. Yeah. I I mean I think it's great. He he's like the way he swings, it's kind of scary and you're not sure how he's going to make it work and he figures it out a little quickly, but that's fine. Like I th- I thought that was great and it made me realize you know what what the MCU is missing more than anything right now is Peter Parker swinging through New York City. Yeah, I remember that was one of our complaints about Homecoming and Far From Home was they only had like one sequence of it and it was at the end of the second movie yeah they didn't ex- have the uh, they didn't yeah. have the original theme either it's extremely overdue to have him swinging through new york city we got it at the end of far from home it's like all right it's time for him to be in new york city it's time for him to swing <laughs> like 
We're not. He's not jumping through backyards anymore in Queens. Um, so he, uh, you know, the guy kind of kills himself. I think this scene is fine. Don't have a problem with it. Um, I really enjoy his relationship to Osborne. Like I think. Yeah, there's levels to it because Harry Osborne got... or Norman Osborne. Norman Osborne. Norman, yeah. He, there's levels to it because you have, you have like. There's the jealousy with Harry where he recognizes that his father likes Peter more. It's very clear that uh, Norman uh, respects Peter and likes him, but Peter's also like, I kind of want to be my own dude. Right. Like, mm-hmm. But he's respectful at the same time. and it, it, It's great. It's great. Um, I love I love that scene when, <laughs> when at the graduation, like, uh, Harry walks off while Norman starts giving, like, a pep talk to Peter. Yeah. And just the entire thing or i also like when norman realizes peter's spider-man that's a cool scene for me oh yeah i I want want to bring that up a little bit later as well we'll get to that um but i want to i want to make a quick comment is that i think willem dafoe is a perfect casting for this role and i think it makes it even better if you guys have ever seen that video on youtube where he goes back through his entire career and he speaks about all the the roles he went for he really worked hard to get this role and it worked out really well the fact that he got it and he did like the way he did it. I yeah. think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, he gets a little flack for having like the power Rangers outfit, but I, it's 2002, whatever, 2001. It's fine. Yeah. yeah who cares? Um, one of the best parts of this movie is the civilian montage of people like reacting to spider. I love that. Yeah. There's the random yeah. garbage guy who's like, I hate him. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> like this is, this is what, what is missing though. Like New York, New York City. Instead, it's like you see a little bit about it in Queens where people are like, hey, Spider-Man. But – and also remember they, they live in a world where there are like multiple superheroes at any time and and a lot of things have happened. But this this montage of people just like reacting to Spider-Man and how he's like sort of taking over, it it's really well done. Yeah, that is something I was going to bring up a little bit later. Um but that's one thing I noticed in this movie as I'm, I'm watching as an um, older person now is the extras and the side characters are absolutely hilarious. Yeah. There are certain points in this movie where if you look in the background and you watch what people are doing, it's just so wonky and strange and it's hilarious. And a lot of them are kind of famous too. Um, there's, there's a lot. Like I don't know all their names, but I know their faces. Yeah. Um, so we meet J. Jonah Jameson. And he's obviously fantastic. Did you guys know Elizabeth Banks was Betty Brant? I, is, I do um, now. I didn't know then. Yeah, she's Betty Brant. She's Betty Brant in the MCU is the blonde chick that does like the uh, school videos. The one that dates Ned. Yeah, for, like one movie. That's also Betty Brant. So it's possible she'll end up at like the Daily Bugle. Well, I hope they don't go the route they did in the comics, where Ned becomes Hobgoblin. I hope they do. That's, that's, I want that's to see where that. where that comes from. No, I want to see that. Um, uh, also, like just some of these shots, the architecture of New York City. Like New York City is my favorite city. And uh, it's criminal that that we haven't seen it in the MCU really at all. Except for Avengers 1. But like mm-hmm. Spider-Man swinging around New that York wasn't, City. Come on. Yeah. It's a different type of New York City because Spider-Man yeah. gives you this feeling of being in the city, moving through the city. Avengers was more like the city existed as a backdrop and these things are going to happen. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, was, it was fine the way it was. Um, so then they we get the scene where they sell Oscorp and that's fine because it sets up him attacking them. You kind of need that. Um, mm-hmm. And then we have the parade where Macy Gray is singing. Macy Gray was really big at this time. I want to say that she was on American Idol and that's where she started. I think that uh I think that says something considering I have absolutely no idea who she is. I might be I might have her confused with uh like another <laughs> black woman with an afro. <laughs> oh god. I I don't know. I'm looking at her I don't see American Idol on her Wikipedia, so that might have been someone else. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. She kind of dropped off, though, completely. Yeah. I mean, she's still working, I guess, but I haven't heard from her since this movie, I think. 
Um, anyway, so the parade, um, it, like Mary Jane's on the balcony. Again, I, I don't care about this stuff, but do you think she'd be busted for cultural appropriation with that? Why is MJ wearing, wearing like a kimono, kimono or whatever? Yeah, it was? why? Like, why is she wearing an Asian? Yeah, outfit? that was interesting, and they they even call attention to it. Where he's like, "Why didn't you wear the black dress?" <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the parade attack happens. The glider. I mean, he, he's kind of threatening in this scene. Uh, the Green Goblin. Um, one thing you notice is that Peter is saving a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember Amazing Spider-Man at all, really. But, he's the um, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But like, does in the MCU does he save a lot of people when he's like fighting the villains? Usually not, right? Uh, not really. I think uh, when he's fighting the villains, it's kind of isolated in all all his fights with the villain. We're talking about Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, right? No, we're talking about Tom Holland. Wow. Oh. Does he really um, save people? I know he does the elevator thing, but those are his friends. Does he save like the little boy that's gonna get crushed and? It's a victim really. of his villains. His villains are like too big for him to like not focus on them. Andrew Garfield does it a couple times, but that's only I because was gonna say, well, that's only because the situation he gets put in involves large amounts of people. Like what I was saying, Tom Holland when he fights the Vulture, and when he's in, uh, I guess it might happen in the second one, but when he fights the vulture, it's in the air, it's in a field, it's in a warehouse, it's on a beach, no one's around. So yeah. it's just focused on him and the vulture. Like, the, does he save people in uh, Venice when he's fighting Mysterio? I'm trying uh, to think. Yes, but it's kind of like how he saves people in Homecoming, where, like, he causes, like, the problem happens and he, like, saves them by default. Like, remember in Homecoming, like, the ship gets pulled in half. Oh, right. Technically, that, yeah. he's saving people. Right, yeah. But, like... It's, like, a general vague... But he's not, like, yeah. pulling them out of direct danger. He's, like, holding a ship together. Well, I kind of like the way they do this because it's, like... First of all, it delays the inevitable confrontation. Um, so, like, he he's... At first, he's on the back foot because he's trying to save all these people from what Goblin is doing. So, uh, I like... I just like watching the actions, like, heroics. Um, and then once he actually gets into the fight, he also gets his ass kicked. And I know I've think I've talked about this before, but I love how he's a brawler. Mm -hmm. Like, I absolutely love that. He swings his fist and some people like the gadget Spider-Man. Some people like the web Spider-Man. I love the brawler Spider-Man. And we get to watch this for the next two movies too, where he just like, like at one point, I think he, he like webs goblin and pulls him down in, into his knee like to like like i i love the way that, that he gets beat up and knocked around in this fight he like literally is getting his head smashed into like the iron railings of the tower like repeatedly um he's getting tossed around all over the place i like the action a lot um what do you guys think about i mean obviously he saves mary jane whatever but what do you guys – oh, did you guys like the effect of the grenade, like, killing all the board members? I thought it was unique. I, I, li I like the goblin gadgets. It, it, was, was, yeah. it, was, it was interesting because at first I thought it was going to be an explosive, and I was like, well, he just killed his son. But then, like, by making it the, like, radiation bomb, like, thing, disintegrator thing. It, like, thing, vaporized them. Yeah. yeah, but that also conveniently made it targeted so it doesn't kill everybody. Right. Uh -huh. Um. So what do you guys think about this like split personality issue that Goblin has? <laughs> okay, so I was I, – this is something I wanted to bring up. Did any of you, when your first time watching this, think that Norman was not the Goblin? Because I couldn't tell if the movie was trying to like hint that like uh, keep us in suspense. I mean I saw this as a child. I think I – no, I thought that he was definitely like – there was something wrong yeah, with him. It's pretty obvious. Right. So like it, also it was on a little – I don't know. Because a, we saw him note, take the ahead, gas. Every... We saw him, like, be in the gas. Yeah. I, I was going to say, on a side note, did you guys notice that uh, when he has the mask on and they do close-ups, his mouth inside the mask doesn't move with his voiceover? Like, no. he'll, like when he's, like, facing no, down the notice. cops at the parade scene, he'll be like, I surrender, his mouth doesn't move. Or when he's talking to Spider-Man on, uh, on the roof with the dad talk, his mouth doesn't move the whole time. 
It's oh, kind of okay. funny, actually. Um, speaking of that scene, uh, I kind of like the idea of the offer to like join up. I agree. Is, I think it's cool. What is Goblin's motivation? Just cause kill destruction. people. He says he has plans, and that he, if they continue to fight, they will cause destruction. So, but he never explains like what will happen if they work together. Will they like end world poverty? Will they well, take over? So it has to do with like him being disrespected, right? And he keeps trying to convince Spider Man. Pretty soon, they're gonna like turn their backs on you for being what you are. I don't really understand how that ties into what happened to him. Yeah. It, it like loosely ties, but it's it's weird for him to take that stance. Like if, if I was the Green Goblin and I became this monster because they tried to take my company from me and like I did this thing to myself and now I'm out of control and then I see Spider-Man and he's being a good guy. I mean, I see how he like gets in my way. I don't really see how we're the same or like should be on the same side. So, but yeah. whatever. Um, so the scene where, where they have like that iconic Spider-Man kiss, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. Like the upside yes, down the kiss. Upside down. Yeah. The upside down. Yeah. I do have, I do have a problem with like how they sexualize her because she her she, they make her soaking wet she's clearly not wearing a bra which like for what reason yeah yeah like, i noticed that and yeah. like her nipples are basically like she might as well be naked yes and it's like why if, if it was part of the story for some reason like spider-man gets really turned on he has to hide his erection in a spandex or something but why would you, why do you have to do that like I don't know. I'm, some movies still do it today, but it's just see, it just seems like way over the top. They're supposed to be like 19, and they're sharing a romantic kiss. Like, why do you need her nipples showing? Uh, I sexualization. Extremely low cut shirt. It's just like, whatever. I I mean I I just feel like who is this for? Like we're I don't know. Uh, freaks. And I was like 12 when I saw Like, the movie is more or less a kid's movie. Yeah. Like, the tone is like, leave it to Beaver, not (laughs) like... (laughs) That's a good... I haven't heard about that show in so long. Um, So... Yeah, no. I uh bet the studio was like, we need need a sexy moment. A sexy thing. No, I think the kiss... The kiss at the time was a pretty big deal. Like I think that became like a very classic movie moment. It's again, this movie has been sort of forgotten, but it still has these like standout moments. Um, I will say though, my favorite scene in the movie is probably the scene with the burning building. Yeah, yeah. I with when the goblin like turns around. Him. Yeah, I he goes like the cop lets him save the old woman. He goes up there. It's the goblin. That already is like kind of scary. Um, and it catches you off guard. But then when he throws those uh, like ninja blade things, whatever they're called, mm. when he throws those and it These goes into that bombs. slow motion where you watch him dodge it, like there's nothing like that in the MCU aside from that Peter Tingle scene. Everything else is like so fast and kind of dull the way that the action happens. But I love the the fire. I love the way it's paced like. He dodges the first three, then Goblin starts hitting him and he like blocks the first two and then the third one cuts his arm hard and like the way that the camera shows it all, I think it's really cool. Um, yeah. And I, I and like it's not even like CGI. Like obviously there's CGI involved, but it feels very real. Even though it can't be real, you know? Um, right. I really like his acrobatics, and this is what I mean by like he's a brawler. Is that he's in the thick of it, like fighting with Goblin, getting cut up. Brawler doesn't just mean he punches things; it means he gets hit a lot too. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is a great scene where he gets cut, and then they actually it becomes a major plot point because they go to the Thanksgiving scene, and um, you know, like Emerson, you said when he when he sees that he got first of all, what is Osborne doing? Like, why does he just start digging his hands into the food? I know, and then he has like his like nom flashback, like I'm gonna kill you moment. Yeah, yeah. 
But when when uh, Aunt May is like, Peter, you're bleeding. And he immediately, like, he plays it so well. He immediately looks at him. He sees the cut. Like, it even, like, lingers for a bit. It's not just like, oh, like, he knows it's him. It, it, you see his face where he's like, where did you say that happened again? Like Yeah, and he's, like, figuring it out. And yeah. also, he he loves Peter. And so it's like, it's blowing his mind right now. Like, he just put it together immediately. Um that's really cool. I put that on par- to give uh, like the MCU some credit. The scene with uh, Michael Keaton in the car, I would put these on equal terms, mm-hmm. but I love both scenes a lot. This is a really great scene. Yeah, they're um, good. And this is a great like sequence for the movie because you have you have the kiss scene, then you have the burning building scene, then you have this scene. It's like three major really good scenes in a row. Um, and I really like the way Osborne like goes on that tirade in the elevator. I completely forgot yeah. that scene existed. Yeah. But it, he like great. calls Mary Jane a gold digger. Yeah, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because like technically at that point any woman he ever brings is a gold digger <laughs> because you know like it's not like they've <laughs> been together any significant amount of time. Right. Um so then Aunt May gives that prayer, which I always think for some reason that scene has always stuck to me. The way she's like, deliver us from evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I like it. I like I like that he makes her finish it. And it's funny. Um, I think that's the best, one of one of the best goblin entrances in the entire film. The wall blows open and his eyes are like illuminated orange as he like slowly like drifts in. That's, that's a good filmmaking right there. Yeah. Uh, and then this part I don't like so much. Where he's in the hospital with Aunt May and she talks about like how what, the first time he saw MJ and he's like, is that an angel? It's like, what? You thought a child was an angel? Like, that That's not what kids think angels look like. It's fucking weird. Yeah. I thought you were going to bring up him and MJ's panic lie. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, I like that scene. It didn't really stand out to me, but that's not a bad scene either. Where she's clearly in love with Spider Man, and um, what about uh, this? Is a good scene where he calls MJ to tell her to be safe, and Goblin picks up. Yeah, and he's like immediately <laughs> laughing. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Can Spider Man come out to play. I like it though. It's definitely like a good call to arms. Like he's immediately like, "Holy shit!" And as a as a viewer, I'm like, "You better get your ass over there, Spider Man." Yeah, exactly. So the bridge scene is a reference to the comics with uh, what's her name? Gwen Stacy. Yeah. Um, this is the part where I'm like, "What is Goblin's motivation again?" <laughs> what the fuck is that? What the hell? Is that your what's phone? It is, but I don't know where my phone is, which is the problem. Weird. Okay, um, one second. I'm going to figure this out. So it's kind of like, what is his motivation in this scene where he's like, I'm going to kill a bunch of kids or Mary Jane? It's like, haven't you kind of lost focus okay, on... Lo- like, ha- hasn't Goblin kind of lost focus on why he... Yes, like, he has 100%. <laughs> he's just fucking around now. He's, but I guess that's expected because he's insane, right? He's fixated on Spider-Man. Yeah, you could play the insane card. Um, mm-hmm. It's like, all right, I don't know what killing Mary Jane does for you. And I don't know what killing a bunch of kids does for you, but whatever. So he lets him drop. You, I get. I like the, the lenses. It doesn't make sense, but the lenses of the two sides. Um, he. It's fun. Like he catches. The only problem with it is, is like a Spider Man is clearly holding on to the cable, and like by the web. It's like obviously, if you attack the cable, he's gonna have to let go. <laughs> right <laughs> so he keeps punching him in the face and he like keeps barely <laughs> holding on it's like yeah if you just like like attacked attacked the cable where the kids would fall he'd have to let go and try to like jump down and and he would let go of both like he has no choice uh, but anyway whatever it's not a bad scene I, uh, I will say that in that final fight, like when they're actually fighting in that like ruined building, the fighting was pretty good like it oh, wasn't I love like it. yeah I love yeah. it. Um, the fighting is good in all of these movies. Um, Which is interesting because this is before like you really started to get a focus on trying to have good fighting. Yeah, right. There's really good brawling. Yeah, some of it is like stupid, but 
Um, like the physics of it are stupid. Like the way they fly away. Did we just lose Emerson and Everett? We lost Emerson. Everett, are you here? Oh, God damn it. All right. Emerson is back. Everett, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. I think I'm a little bit behind, though. All right, we're good. Yeah, we're there good. was there was a momentary like. This blip. keeps happening. Yeah. Um, all right. So I, another thing is like the New Yorkers. I really like the New Yorkers. I think it's done. This movie does a really good job of like showing how diverse New York is and what the people are like. Um, it seems like in in like the MCU when Spider Man interacts with New Yorkers, it's it's only to make them seem like quirky. Like they're yeah, all kind of comical. Quirky. Yeah. Uh, here they felt very real to me, even though they are stereotypes, like they're walking stereotypes. But yeah. um, I'm okay with it. Um, so yeah, he throws them into that abandoned church or whatever that is, and like yeah, he beats the crap out of. Him. He takes a beating. And what yeah. about that explosion? Like I isn't know. that cool? Yeah, that yeah. was nuts. And I just love the look of like the mask half blown off, and he's all bloody. Like come on, that's what I want to see from Spider Man. Yeah, and then he's like, he like, he he basically. I know it's a cliche, like the second wind, but yeah. I think when he starts saying, "I'm gonna like kill Mary Jane," and he's like, "No, I believe that he would be like, I have to stop him." Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, he he gets a second wind. That's a great way to put it. Um, and I, one thing I wanted to point out is I always love the sound of when Goblin tears down the webs because it has like a metal noise to it. Um, yeah. Uh huh. And then, so yeah, he reverses the fight. He starts like fighting smarter. He brings the the brick wall down on him. Um, here's the thing about his death, though. What was his? He was always gonna get hit with the glider. Yeah. So like, if he had hit Spider Man, there like he didn't have enough time to stop it. But he only saw it when it like went past Spider Man, so he wouldn't have been able to stop it. Even I guess skewer them together. I, I I'm thinking that's the only play is they're gonna kill each other, and yeah. and I don't really understand from his point of view. So if he can't like be partners with Spider Man, he he'd rather die. <laughs> <laughs> He's in love with him. And, or you could say like, well, he'd rather die than lose. But okay, whatever. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like. Also, yeah. he could have ducked. Yes, he could have, but he didn't for some reason. So he he also he or is jumped. on the ground when he sets the glider, and he stands up into the yeah, glider's yeah, path. He does. <laughs> so maybe he forgot his plan. Yeah, it it doesn't really make sense. But you know, at least it's the classic like Spider Man doesn't kill the villain; the villain kills himself. Because mm. I don't really ever want to see Goblin anymore. So yeah, that's okay. Um, he does say that line right before that Ben Parker is his father. I mean, that's a nice nod to that. I guess, I guess you could say he wanted Peter to be his son, essentially. Goblin did. So I guess that's what it was, is like, he wants Peter because the two of them together could take over the world. I don't know. Like, (laughs) that's not really feasible. He's, he is still just on a glider. It's not like they can fight armies or anything. Yeah, they're just going to get shot down and murdered. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And then he says, don't tell Harry. I like that part. Because I feel like that that line was added later where they're like, wait a second, how does Peter process this with Harry? (laughs) Because as he's dying, he's like, don't tell Harry. On one hand, it's like, yeah, don't tell him because it's terrible. On the other hand, it's like, all right. I don't think Spider-Man needed to deliver the body. Yeah, that was questionable because it definitely <laughs> puts all blame on him for the future. Yeah, he could. I mean, but here's the other thing. Don't tell Harry. If you leave the body, everyone's going to know that he's the goblin. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but also, if I was imagine, Spider-Man, I would have been yeah. like, sorry. I probably would have left the body. But can yeah. you imagine Peter like undressing the corpse? <laughs> yeah, like he had to like because he pry didn't the, do it. He had to pry the glider out of his like body and stuff he like that. He did he did disrobe the corpse and wrap him in a blanket. Also, how the hell did he swing to his penthouse 
<laughs> while carrying the body. Like, that's crazy. And how did he keep the blanket on the body? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? The blanket flies off while he's carrying him. And people take pictures. <laughs> of Spider-Man carrying the, a naked guy. <laughs> a naked, around. bloody corpse. <laughs> and in his face his face is visible too because the mask is all gone jay jordan jameson would have lost his mind he's <laughs> like spider-man is a pedophile yep. freak spider-man's sexual escapades gone wrong you guys remember that one line from into the spider-verse where miles morales is trailing unconscious peter parker and the, the cop says yeah, yeah, yeah. spider-man's trailing a homeless corpse behind him <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, That's kind of what it reminds me of. So then we get to the funeral. Harry is angry with Spider-Man because he chose to, like, I mean, I guess it's bad timing. I guess that's probably not how Spider-Man intended it. But it's like, did I lose you guys again? Jesus Christ, again. Why does this keep happening? All right, Emerson's back. Everett, are you back? Everett, Everett, yeah, Everett. I'm, okay, I'm, all right. Um, you can yeah, see when it drops out by saying stream not present, and then if you just leave and rejoin the call, it resets it. Well, he seems to rejoin the same time you do. I don't know what's triggering that. Um, he doesn't leave, but... Um, uh, so Harry is angry, and I was thinking, like, okay, best case scenario, Harry walks into the room to find his dad wrapped in a blanket, and he's dead <laughs> with, like, glider wounds. Like, that's that's pretty weird. I, I don't understand the plan, but... All right, so now Harry is pissed, and then MJ realizes that she actually loves Peter. That I just I don't understand. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. It seems like they were just like, eh, let's just wrap it up. So the way that I see it is what she should have done is kind of realize, like, she knows he loves her. Like, she has to know that. So... On some level, she's probably like, you know, I thought of you. And that makes me feel like I'm willing to actually try this romance. Not I love you, but like I know that you've always loved me. And like you're the person I unexpectedly thought of as I thought I was going to die. And um, I think I want to like try. And he can still reject her, you know. And it, it hits the same note. But it's like her saying I love you. I understand that makes it higher stake for him to reject her. And, like, he's rejecting the happiness. But it's like she, she didn't love him this entire time. Right. So, I don't – I just – I think you, you're you cheating by suddenly, oh, I – like, what? At what point was she like, please, Peter? Like, no. <laughs> Ever. Um, and then the ending montage. I love this montage. I must have watched it a million times as a kid. And we finally get one in Far From Home, which I would say is equally as good. Especially the way it ends with the whole like reveal. But um, I, I love it and in Far From Home. I love it in this movie. It needs to happen in the next one. Um, so anyway, do you guys have anything else to add for this? No, I think we covered it. I'm excited to watch the second one. Yeah, I am too. The second one is definitely the supposedly the godfather of superhero movies. So is the fight of the week me fighting Bonesaw? Yeah, that was the... How the fuck did you know that? (laughs) Oh, it's so clear. Bonesaw is a fantastic character. Bonesaw (laughs) is ready. Yes, Kia. So how are you going to take down Bonesaw? By the way, we glossed over this, but he gets fucking bashed with a chair a couple of times. Like, Like, really bashed. Yeah, he gets bashed. Also, Bonesaw grabs a crowbar at one point. Yeah, I was like, what? Are they going to kill this guy? If he was normal, he'd be yeah, dead. I'm, yeah. I'm so surprised th- no one brought up the very dated joke that Peter Parker made to him. Did your husband make it for you? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's homophobic, but I, uh, I'm i okay with it. I mean, it's <laughs> so meant what to are offend you do, Bonesaw. Kia? That's the thing. Kia, you're, you're locked in the cage, okay? It's you and Bonesaw. Wait, but You're can I point out Spider-Man. why this joke is probably not that bad? Because it kind of attacks the alpha male, like, you know how those are, they're like hated right now? Uh-huh. Yes. It's kind of attacking his masculinity. So I feel like that's maybe why it got a pass from us. Cause like it, I, I don't, like, no one's going to be like, hey, Bonesaw's the victim. <laughs> At least not the social justice people. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm, I'm trapped in the cage with Bonesaw. Yeah. It's you, not, you're not Spider Man. It's yeah. you. Now, they are going to hand him those things 
but not immediately. You have you have your opening when he doesn't have any chairs or crowbars. All right, since like I've been watching the show and I'm sure that this is going to be like some type of rigged fucking thing. I think the first thing I need to do is go for the nut shot. <laughs> which isn't a gentleman's way to win, but I really think like he's if he's going to grab a crowbar at some point, if I'm like on the other side of the cage when he does that, that's that's bad for me. That's really yeah. bad. Because he can start swinging, like you can't yeah. block it. Yeah, he's gonna like take chunks out of my flesh. So uh, I would when it, when he's like taking me lightly, I would definitely kick him in the balls. <laughs> and okay. Then, and then I would honestly, I would as he's like <laughs> reeling from the nut punch or nut kick, I would probably grab him by his hair and drag him onto his back, and then like drag him. <laughs> on the mat like for some added shame <laughs> so like he has like the pain in his balls but he's also like being pulled by his hair his long hair on the back yeah. um, but you have to finish him before they start throwing things in for him to grab because if he gets up at any point and gets a crowbar you're fucked well that's the thing if i pull him like to the center of the cage i can then get on top of him and out wrestle him completely like he's big and strong but there's no way like he's getting up. No way. Uh, and he's not he's clearly not like a martial artist. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He's probably going to like uh try to muscle his way out at the beginning and if when that clearly won't work, I think he's going to like slowly succumb to the fact that he's stuck there, which is like the natural reaction. It's to keep like lurching and when that's not working, of course, he's probably going to scoot his way to the edge of the ring, and they're probably going to try to hand him things. And I, I know how to stop that. Like I can drag him back to the center. <laughs> um, but eventually, I would, I would expect he's going to like run himself out. I'll probably go over the three minute mark, and then I would start dropping elbows on his face. Oh, so, God. Yeah, I mean that's what you do because you cut him. Like he's probably not used to the blood, like getting cut up like that. Um, I would expect them to try to bite me, so I'd be watching for that. Um, at some point, I'd probably just get the mount and then start dropping like 12 to 6 elbows, which are illegal in the UFC. Um, and I know he's going to be tired. Uh, I could submit him, but I, I would be a little worried about him biting me still. Um, and yeah, Jesus. I think, yeah. You got you to gotta drop him quick at the beginning, though, because yeah. he's not going to fight fair. And so he has to go down. And if he gets something, dude, can you imagine trying like the, if he got a crowbar, the only thing you could do is try to dodge. Yeah. Can you imagine like, like, but instinctively, like, let's say he swings the crowbar at your head. Instinctively, you're gonna raise your arm to block. Well, I'm gonna do drop you, to the floor. That's what I I would drop to the floor. Yeah, um, and then hit him in the nuts, <laughs> and then pick up the crowbar. <laughs> I mean, there is a chance. Like if if he actually uh, if I successfully dodge. I could scramble around him. If I get close behind distance, him, I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it depends on like how close and the timing. And I assume he's used to swinging the crowbar. And <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not used to dodging like, crowbars. Because if, if you get hit with that, even the glancing blow, yeah. it's over. Yeah. Like he's going to take a chunk out of my skull. Um, so yeah, that, that would be like, I might even rush him if I can. I try to get him to swing and then like, hold back so he misses and then close the distance and then just fight for the crowbar the entire time i mean for sure i have more stamina than him because he's gonna gas out with those big muscles yeah um, i would headbutt him for sure i would i would i would not play fair uh well you can't you'll die if you do yeah yeah i wouldn't care so much if he got a chair like i would take the hit from the chair i, w I would just grab it after he hits me <laughs> like once i would just grab it and then I'd get close, and then he's like, once I start wrestling him, he's not going to be able to hit me with the chair. Like, who cares? Right. Um, all right, let's move on to the roundup. Um, uh, Everett, you finished the boys? I did. I did and did. I did. Definitely a win. Uh, I've completely changed my view on this entire season. Uh, I, I still think the first three episodes are a little slow, but... What I said before about hating drip-fed content, I completely reverse. I think it definitely helped build the hype, and it made waiting and watching a much better experience. And uh, I'm not allowed to go into spoilers, right? Just 
vague notions. Well, I'd yeah, no. rather you don't because I haven't watched it yet. Okay, I won't. I won't go into spoilers then. But what I will say is that final episode changed my view on the future of this show in a lot of ways, and it it both makes me a little curious and it makes me really excited. Plus, it had a bunch of moments that I really want to talk about in spoilers eventually. That my God, are they great? So I, you guys should go watch the entire season if you get the chance. Yeah, so here's the thing. I am actually 30 minutes away from finishing the entire season. Um, I I don't really, like, there were some interesting twists, but I'll just say it right now. Nobody of any importance dies so far. Um, there is a lot of buildup where they're kind of like, oh, we got to solve this problem so that we can solve the larger problem which is obviously taking the whole season to solve. And um, there's like definitely like that flip-flopping allegiance stuff happening. It's There's a lot of setup. People keep talking about how great it is. I thought, if I have to be completely honest, I think there was only one part of it where I was like, well, that's, that's pretty cool that they did that. The rest of it is like, okay. Um, like ever, you said a lot of moments. I don't know, maybe they're all in the last 30 minutes, but... Well, what's the without spoiling anything? What's the last thing you remember? Just like the last scene you saw. I mean, how I, how could I? I told you I'm in the last episode. How could I not spoil? I'm, it? I'm just I'm trying to get a scope of like what part you're at. <laughs> I mean, they're gonna go for a fight. They're going. They're gearing up to go for a fight. Okay, okay. Then you haven't gotten to a lot of the parts that I'm referring to yet. Okay, so you're saying it's the last thirty minutes that well, are like yeah. The there's best a lot part. of stuff there that is really great. So, okay, that's kind of my point is like the first seven episodes are entertaining, sure, but like no one of any real importance, like the deep has been like restructuring his life the entire season, like trying to like make amends for his reputation. That's he's, you know, and of, of the original seven, like nothing, everyone is just like in the same place they were at the beginning, more or less, um, so yeah, it's like it's okay. I'm not. I am not putting it up there with like the greatest TV ever. It's like if I could compare it to any similar show, I would say it's like slightly better than Daredevil season three. Um, I would have. I would say it's probably on par with season two of Daredevil. Okay, so it, it's worth watching, but it's not. Well, in your obviously, opinion, it's not it's godsend. Not, yeah, obviously, it's not like high art like Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones or anything like that. But it's well, still really good. It's like at least a unique take on the superhero genre. See, but see, you and Claudia have been both texting me about the show and you both keep telling me, maybe you guys overhyped it for me, about how crazy and insane it is. And I'll just tell you right now, Emerson, Yeah. most of what they must be talking about is just like gore. <laughs> like they go for okay. shock value and they kill a lot of people. Again, no one important. But there's a lot of like... Oh my god, they kill this many people suddenly out of nowhere. And it's like that to me is not enough to be like this show's amazing. I, I, I think, think I, I would I, say I if you're I'm, bored, uh, watch it. <laughs> well, I think a majority, not a majority, like a good portion of my excitement for this season is and I don't know if Claudia has read the comics or of knows what happens. No. But but the fact that not only are they straying away from what the comic did, but the fact that they're like recreating the series in their own, like whatever they want to do. It, well, it's really it. good. It's not like, yeah, they're adapting it. It's a really, I think it's a good take. Plus I, I'm really, it makes me really excited to see what they're going to do. Like if they're going to go this far, then what else are they going to change? I mean, Emerson, as you can guess, there's like a, a, a back plot the main plot of the main threat, which is like they're trying to take over the world or some shit like that. I um, should just tell everyone right now, I know what the comic arcs are. Like, Everett, I know who Black Noir is. Okay. So, like, okay. I, I, I'm i just like, all right, like, I, I, here's the thing. I liked the first season. I thought it was fun. Like, it was interesting. I'm going to watch the second season at some point, but... I just haven't. I don't know. Something I'm just like, eh. I'll just watch it when I'm. It's, when I. It's a good binge. It's a good binge. It's not like I wouldn't. Yeah. It's yeah. nothing. Well, th that's what I'm just waiting it's, to do. It's, it's, gonna, it's entertaining though. Probably in the holidays, I'll watch it or something. You know. 
Um, as but you're right, ends. but I can't I can't argue with you because I'll give you spoilers. And I don't want to do that. So, I mean, I'm gonna I've been watching it as I've been doing my graphic novel. So for the last thirty minutes, I'm gonna actually sit and watch it, and maybe like I'll get blown away. I know that I liked the end of the first season, even though I could kind of predict what the wife's issue was going to be. Um, and I, I'm hoping that they don't do another stupid cliffhanger because as it is right now with the, with the hints that they've given at what the plot is, like the major villain plot, I, I don't care. Like I know right now I don't care. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll let you know next week. Um, I've been still watching Frasier and you know, what a shame. I just want to say what a shame it is that we didn't get more of Kelsey Grammer as beast because he was perfect he was literally perfect as beast you guys know who i'm talking about kelsey Grammer's still um, alive right yeah he played sideshow bob and uh he was in yeah the he's old he's movie. old he's too old now do you don't know who i'm talking about emerson uh no kelsey Grammer, who's who plays frazier he was beast in x3 and if days, oh days yes past, yes okay yeah he's totally perfect for beast like the most perfect person you could have cast. So it's a shame that that's like, that's sort of moved on from that now. Yeah. Um, uh, did you guys catch Bill Burr's monologue on SNL? Yep. Yep. I did not actually. I missed it. I saw so, it. I also saw Twitter like was quite angry at him. So, okay. Why? First of all, fuck Twitter. Uh, okay. But here's, here's what he did. He did his usual shtick. I don't think it was like his best material that I've ever heard. But he did this thing where he talks about, yeah, he talks about how like white women somehow hijacked the, uh, uh, not Black Lives Matter, but yeah, like the woke, like we're victims sort of shit. And the white women have sort of hijacked it into making it about them and like sort of jumped ahead of all the minorities and whatever. And, you know, he, and the joke is like everyone on Twitter, like the white women are clearly triggered saying he's not funny. Now, the thing about comedy is you're supposed to acknowledge that everything is a joke. What happens now is like people will laugh at everything until it's something that they don't think yep. is funny. Like yep. you could laugh at the Mexican jokes and the black jokes and the white pol- uh, political jokes. But if someone says uh, like a joke about special needs people, you're like, well, hold on. My brother's that's too far. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, that's not funny. You shouldn't say jokes like that. Or if you say like women are gold diggers and you're like i'm a woman no it's not but you meanwhile you were laughing at like all the dumb husband jokes and whatever so uh that's kind of what's happening and i just thought it was funny i don't even think it was his best material oh it absolutely wasn't a lot of it was recycled and refined like it was funny to watch but it was not like i wasn't dying yeah and he kind of he hit some awkward moments like they clearly the audience was like are we allowed to laugh at this and yes in some ways and it, it ended with an applause but um, you know, SNL has sucked for like 15 years. Let's be real. I would say that, let me put it there. I think that was some of the funniest SNL has ever been, but it was not the funniest Bill Burr has ever been. Absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, Twitter, I, the story is just like Twitter is up in arms about Angry. it. But I was looking at like something like 20% of the world's population is on Twitter. And I'm oh, sorry, not the world's population. I don't know, like 20% of social media users are on Twitter. Something like that. I and, hate Twitter. And ten percent of Twitter users actually post, which yeah, equals to Twitter about two percent of the world's population. Yeah, so it's the minority screaming into the void and right. getting picked up by news outlets. And you guys like you can follow me on social media on my Instagram or whatever and like Facebook if you're my friend, whatever. And you know that I rarely post. And like people that regularly post I'll be honest, Aren't if you're one of those nuts. people, there's probably something wrong with you. Like, yeah, no, like seriously. I haven't posted on Instagram in I the last time I posted was when I went to the War Museum in London in December of last year. Yeah. So like it's been so long. Like I just I know that no one really gives a fuck about what I'm doing or what I'm saying unless it's like tangently interesting. Like I have a I have a Facebook friend. Like I'm not going to say the name or anything, but they're not even really my friend. They're more like Jade's friend. And I I keep their I would I don't ignore them because literally all they post, like they act like these things are happening to them. They literally post all day long about things that actually they're not know involved who this in. This is cuz I think I've seen them recommended to me on Instagram. 
possible. I mean, you've never come across this person except for at my wedding. I don't know. Um, well, no, I think I mentioned this person to you on Instagram and you said, oh, this is this person. I, I don't I don't think so. Not this person. Oh, okay. um, someone like, else. Then. Like, OK, just like seven minutes ago, um, something about latex Halloween masks that are Trump's face, essentially. Um, then like some other post about some inspirational quote that was like that was like uh, four hours ago. Um, four hours. What the fuck? Yeah, another one is a picture of Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein as the girls from The Shining. Um, a, a re reshare the ten most embarrassingly awful couple costumes. Uh, you know, just like it's like, why are you posing so much? Um, the now now she's like she has a take on the people that tried to kidnap the governor. Um. Jim Wright's take on the militia militia patriots who were going to kidnap and execute missions, Michigan's governor mm-hmm. is pretty much in keeping with my own. And it's like shared some other person's post. Um, there was a, there's a picture of a fly that's somehow related to politics because of Pence's thing. Um, a foosball pizza box like Jesus, like, come on, stop. And here's like a fly swatter picture. Um Learned about naked ballots from a bunch of naked celebrities, and it's like a video of naked people talking about something stupid. What the fuck, dude? Wait, what? I, I'm telling this you, is, it's numbing my brain. You're just telling tiger, it to me. And it's I, I'm just saying, brain. this is these are the people that are on Twitter, like yeah. commenting about things. And, and news companies use it as a, like, oh, slow news day? Oh, da, da. Twitter. Tw- and the headline will be outrage over X, and then their evidence is like five tweets with 11 retweets. Right. Right. I mean, most of these, like, there's clearly a bubble that she's in, but it's like she posts like she's a news source. Like you're not a, I don't need to see your repost of like Eddie Van Halen as breaking news. <laughs> like I get it. The man died. It's like on every like major thing. You're not a news source and your opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. But so I actually I actually keep her on my friends list just because I want to keep in touch with what these types of people are doing. Um like what they're like talking about right now, just to know what like what that side is up to. Anyway, uh, moving on to gaming. So Emerson, you heard about some next gen storage space news? Yeah. So there's been some pictures that have come out from early access people who got the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, and these people have discovered that both of these consoles have one terabyte of storage pa- space, but that's before the operating system, the UI, all of that stuff is installed. So it's actually smaller. So the pictures appear to show that the Xbox Series X has 850 gigabytes, where the PS5 has 664 gigabytes in their one terabyte that you can use for games. Now, theoretically, due to the next-gen games not needing multiple textures, the games can be much smaller. So it might not be a problem. You might be able to store more on 664 gigs than on a terabyte. But it's right. just interesting that that's coming out. They're advertised as one terabyte where it's like you guys should probably advertise as this is the amount of storage you're getting, not it's one terabyte, you know, before we put anything in the console. Right. Yeah. So that, that's interesting. And, and so you said that I also can't use my external hard drive anymore. Right. So here's how that works. So you need an SSD. So the SSDs are not a hard drive. It's a solid state drive. A hard drive, you would need to copy the information from the hard drive to the SSD to play it, from what so I understand. Dumb. Well, that's the problem with How making them How do you them insert run an SSD into an Xbox, whatever it's called? Series X, you just get a card and you plug it into the back. I know that you can okay. also put SSDs into the PS5. The problem with the PS5 is you have to open up the console, unscrew some stuff to put the hard drive in, which... It's or the solid state drive in, which That's pretty crazy. is breaking. It breaks warranty. That's the problem. Because if, if you do something else in there and you break it, then you've broken the warranty because you modified it. Um, however, PS5, you can use any SSD that you want to buy. Xbox only has one at the moment proprietary SSD that costs $220. 
Yeah. Okay. So, so like, Jesus. it's weird. Both of the consoles are just doing weird stuff. Weird, weird stuff. Okay. That's really bad. Yeah, strange. Um, and then you also read that all the PS4 games will be PS5 backwards compatible? Yes. All PS4 games will be coming to the PS5 except for 10, and I scanned the list of those 10 titles. I recognized none of them, and I don't think anyone will care. So that's cool. Yeah. I mean, the thing about the Xbox backwards compatibility is because I'm playing things like Splinter Cell, like the original right. ones. Ancient and that's ones. yeah, that's not available to me on PS4. Right, it's which sucks. Still not good enough, like, yeah. Yeah. Um what I would really have liked though, and I'm assuming nothing has changed, I would like Xbox to put up some legacy servers for original Xbox games. Imagine if we could play Fusion Frenzy or what was that other game, Conflict Desert Storm? Was that it, Kia? Yeah. Like I would love dedicate a couple legacy servers. Not many people are gonna play it. Give us some legacy servers so we can play these old games multiplayer. Yeah, or just like make a new Fusion Frenzy. The game was so good. I, feel I like agree. That's and, a good idea. The concept sounds until awesome. Until you put it into practice. Why? What like, the legacy servers we, are like, making we, a new game? Uh, no, like I agree with you. Like legacy servers would be a good idea, but it wouldn't last long. I don't think. Like we always talk about like all the good times and stuff we had. Like in like for example, Modern Warfare Two or Modern Warfare Three, which are still up. But then you go back and play them and you realize, like, wow, this game is either much different from what I remember or it's, like, unplayable now. Like, the the, the change from what we play now from what was then, I think, would be kind of hard to deal with. All right. Um, uh, you got your Game of Smart Ass, Ev? Yep, I do. All righty. Uh, whose turn is it to start this week? I think, I don't know. I think it's Kia's. I'm pretty sure it's keys. All right. I'm going to write that down for next One day week. we'll like, ch- yeah, let, write them down from now on, Everett, <laughs> yeah. so we're not like, uh. uh. All right. Let's go with who. Who. Okay. Ready? I am an American national. I have blonde hair and blue eyes. I work for the CIA. Jack I've Ryan? Operated- no. Fuck. Wait, what, what'd you say? Jack Ryan. No. Fuck. I've operated in disguise as an international aid worker. My name is an alias, and my real name is unknown. Oh, god damn it! I'm such a fucking moron. Why do I keep doing this? I have no in idea t- who this is. In 2019, I served as liaison to the rebel group Kataris 26. Uh, okay. I've had contact with Scott Mitchell, Sam Fisher, and Team Rainbow at one point. Most notably, I served as a handler for the, a team of ghosts in Bolivia. Oh, Karen Bowman. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like, I gotta go with the first thing that enters my mind. And you know what the worst part is? As I said, Jack Ryan, I was like, he has black hair. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. What's next? Um, Who? No. What? You just did who. Person, place, or thing. Um, Which one did you want? Wait, it's person, place, or thing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you just did a person okay no because smart ass is who like who am i what am i where am i um all right what what at what thing i don't know thing all right the thing okay <laughs> whatever you the want thing. to call it here we go i am an ancient relic oh, God. in the comics i am a part of a set of three i was destroyed in battle a fake version of this item can be observed infinity in the first... gauntlet nope Fake version of this item can be observed in the first Thor movie in Asgard's vault. The Infinity Gauntlet was also there as a side note. Um, I was created by the first Sorcerer Supreme. I am normally housed in Kamartage. I can manipulate the flow of time. The Time Stone? No. What? So am I, am I back in? You guys are. You guys can both answer now. You got... It's va- that's not the correct answer, Emerson. Th- the next the one fuck? is I safely conceal one of the six Infinity Stones. The Eye of Agamotto. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what the fuck it was called. Wait, I was wh- like, is it? You said it was a set of, of three. Yeah, in the comics, the Eye of Agamotto was a set of three. There are three eyes. Did you say that in the clue that it's? Yeah, in the comics, I am a part of a set of three. Oh, okay. That's what threw me off. I just got fucking cucked. 
Yeah, the time stone was close. It's just uh, not the exact object. Damn, I'm getting slaughtered. All right. Final one is place. Ready? I have only appeared in one live action film. I consume suns as a power source. I was eventually destroyed via a chain reaction in my power conduits. My main weapon is capable of destruction of a massive scale. I was built 30 years after the Battle of Endor. Death Star 2? What? Uh, well, I got it wrong, so never mind. I, I got it <laughs> okay. wrong. He said what? I asked and what I you said, said. But I got it wrong. It's Death Star 2 is what I said, which okay, is wrong. Okay, yeah, no, that's wrong. <laughs> I know what it is, but it's so stupid. I am the location where Han Solo was murdered by Kylo Ren. That's fucking dumb. I was under the control of the First Order. My initials are SB. Starkiller Base. Yep. I couldn't it. remember the name. All right. He is three for God. three. Do you want the extra question for double or nothing? Uh, yeah, but hold on. Death Star 2 was the one in Return of the Jedi, wasn't it? Right, yeah, but that was at the was Battle like, of Endor. Yeah, it was at the Battle of Endor, so I got confused. Oh, okay. Where I was like, God damn, I'm getting slaughtered. All right. All right, so you want the extra question? Um, It's going to be about fucking Star Wars? It's going to be a specific... Do it, Kia! Uh, yeah, do it's it! Gonna, it! It has to do with the question, so Starkiller Base. has something to do with Starkiller Base. All right, go ahead. All right, your extra question is... Starkiller is the original name for what character in the Star Wars franchise? That's fucked up, Everett. Does he need to know his actual name? Are it, you yeah, are you asking for the name of the game or the No, I'm asking for the character in which Starkiller is the original name. Oh my god. It has to do with the You're the asking zero. for So his original name was Starkiller? Yes. And and then he had a different name? Yes. No, he got called Star Killer. He had a- another name when he was born. Star- okay. Star yeah, Killer it's all is- like fucked up. Star Killer is the original <laughs> name for one person in the Star Wars franchise. Who is it? Yeah, but that's not that's his original question. name. He had a name before that. He became that. Yeah, that's Star Killer asking, doesn't right? sound like a what name. What was the name that he you? was given when he was <laughs> I, born? I don't. I don't think you're thinking of the same person, Emerson. I okay. We'll see. What was the original name of Starkiller? Or I don't. Okay. Star. I'll read it again. Starkiller is the original name for what character in the Star Wars franchise? Oh, Luke Skywalker. Yeah, correct. Oh, I was thinking of Galen. You're Merrick. You're thinking of Galen Merrick. Yeah. Yeah. And his name is Starkiller. His code name is Starkiller. But I have in the. <laughs> I, I wrote this down specifically to explain it if anyone got confused. In the original draft of Star Wars, it was originally called Star Wars from the Adventures of Luke yeah, Starkiller. The reason it was confusing is because you said original name as if in the canon he had an original name. But you're talking about in the development. I'm talking about in the production. Yeah, it doesn't sound like that when you say that question, though. Yeah, it sounds like you mean like this character was named this and then took this name. Yeah, you basically said that he was his, he was born Star Killer and then had his name changed to something else. Okay, well, which perhaps made no I sense. should have been more. <laughs> well, if I if I had explained it anymore, it would have made the question easier. Well, yeah, but it's like it's hard for <laughs> reasons that don't make sense. It, like if you want to ask me what Luke Skywalker was originally called, I could have told you, but I don't know like. What he, what Star Killer changed his name to? No, the reason it was problematic is because there was a game, The Force Unleashed. The character was named yeah. Star Killer, and I knew Which he had a name before Star Killer. I know, but like that's what makes it confusing because it's like what, yeah. whatever. It's fine. Kia got it. Okay, so your current score, Kia, you got twenty-four four to twenty-one this week. Twenty-five yeah. to twenty-one. It's at it's twenty-one to twenty-eight. Oh Jesus! So Emerson twenty-one, Kia twenty-eight. That's how we do it. All right. Um, hold on one second. Crap, crap, crap. Um, all right. So moving on to news at minute 104. So not, not too much news this time. Uh, WandaVision set photos. They show, uh, what's her name? The, what is her name? <laughs> 
What's the, the Elizabeth character? Olsen? Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah, yeah. I was like Scarlet Witch. So there are set photos that show him or show her being pregnant. That makes sense. So people are thinking uh, it's like um, it's leading to because she has two children called Wiccan and Speed. Which oh are, my god! Sounds stupid, yeah, but it sounds um, like they took their names but like made them a little different. <laughs> yeah. So whatever. Uh, that might exist. We'll see. Oh boy. Um, rumor is that Venom star Tom Hardy rumored to be in consideration for star studded Spider-Man three. Okay. So, That's uh, okay. That is interesting. Uh, based on the news, I'm going to tell you soon. Um, Direct has shared a rumor suggesting that there's general in- interest from both Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures to have Tom Hardy's Venom appear in Spider-Man 3. There are no real talks yet, though. So, for sure, the there's serious interest from Sony and probably very little interest from Marvel. But, besides that, Doctor Strange is yep, going to appear in this. Spider-Man 3, which... I mean, just just having watched the Spider-Man movie, like I am ready for Tom Holland Spider-Man to be in New York and to like do New York Spider-Man things. But now he's not. Yeah, this is like multiverse and. That's what I'm saying. His yeah. movies rely are reliant on the side casts. It's like introducing this person and Spider-Man is like around them. This is huge. This is like so many crazy things happening to him right now. Like I just wanted another clean spider-man story of him in new york city being hunted by the sinister six whatever so it looks like it's gonna be a multiverse thing with yeah strange in it so dr strange is in it now whatever um okay and then we have this other news which is non-marvel studios movies on disney plus have now been dubbed marvel legacy so this is like they're basically acknowledging that these movies exist but not in the mcu Whereas okay. before they kind of didn't acknowledge them. Uh, so this leaves a couple things out. Number one, what about the Netflix stuff? Mm. So like you can you can be pretty sure, and this is just the same. It's basically X-Men and Fantastic Four movies. You can be pretty sure that they are all coming to... Uh, they are all coming to the MCU as like reboots. So that's why these are legacy films. But the Netflix stuff, we still don't know. And we still don't know the Sony stuff. Apparently, there have been recent claims that the the Spider-Man movies are coming to Disney Plus, but that obviously hasn't happened. So, um, yeah, I don't know what that means for the Sony and Netflix stuff. But yeah, we have a Marvel Legacy category now. Um, Besides this, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth's brother, Luke Hemsworth wants to join the MCU as Wolverine. I don't think he would be good. Why? I just, the things I've seen him in, he hasn't been, like, he doesn't strike me particularly as... What have you seen like, him in? Hmm. I'm trying to remember what fucking movie it was. I, I've, I, I saw him in something. Well, he's uh, known oh, fucking, for Westworld. No, what? I saw him in uh, the Hunger Games movies. Oh, was that him? Wait, yeah. you're talking about Luke Hemsworth? I Liam said, Hemsworth. I said Luke Hemsworth. Liam oh, Hemsworth. Oh, okay, then I haven't seen Hemsworth. Luke Hemsworth at all. No, Liam Maybe Hemsworth Hemsworth. should not be Wolverine. That's Luke what Hemsworth, I was that's who I was. He's like the lesser known I mean he looks way too much like Thor, that's the thing. <laughs> he's oh, not that okay, but I haven't seen him though, in anything. But... Yeah, he's short and stockier, but he's probably like the ugliest of them. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at his IMDB. I'm not really seeing anything I recognize besides Westworld. Yeah, he's definitely lesser known, but he he has like the same eyes as Chris Hemsworth, and I, it would be weird, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he does have the right build for it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, Aya Cash, she plays Stormfront in The Boys. She is interested in playing some roles. She says, tell them to call me. I'm available. I grew up on X-Men. So in my fantasy world, I'd be in that universe, the Phoenix Rising. 
I would have loved to be a part of the X-Men world. And if there's another opportunity, they can come to me whenever. I mean, I did just mention Jean Grey. Um, wow. She, she says, yeah, but I also, I mean, my favorite character in all of the X-Men universe has always been Beast. So if we're going to do a gender swap. Uh, what? What? I mean, she she rambles a lot. I'm not reading it all, but so Jean Grey or Beast, she's a little older, and it, I guess it would really depend on. I think she could pull a Jean Grey, but it would really depend on who they cast as Wolverine and Cyclops. I guess. Yeah. Because it's not like she's old, but how young are they going to go? I don't know. It's it's going to be. I liked weird. the guy from the 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 soft reboot of the X Men movies who played Cyclops. Whatever, the guy from uh, Ready Player One, I forgot his name. Yeah, but he won't be. Yeah, I don't think he'll be back. Yeah, I know he won't be back. I liked him, though. Um, Thor, Love and Thunder star Natalie Portman seemingly confirms Jane Foster cancer storyline. She says, I can't tell you that much. I'm really excited. I'm starting to train to get muscles. If there can be all these female superheroes, the more of them they are, the better it is. I'm trying to think. It's based on the graphic novel of The Mighty Thor. She's going through cancer treatment and is a superhero on the side. So, okay. Really not excited for that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um rumor Black Widow may include an expected cameo or appearance from another Avenger. Who do you guys think it's going to be? When do you guys saying? remember when I reported on the supposed like leak? Vaguely Remind well, me. Well, the, the leak said Iron Man would make an appearance. Oh, well, this this is Hawkeye. I thought that would be the oh, expected one. Oh, no. I didn't get that. It doesn't say anything about Iron Man in this article, but yeah, it says Hawkeye. It's meant to be a surprise, but like I, ne- I, was, I kind of always assumed he would be in it. It seems weird that he wouldn't be. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. That's all the news. Yeah about it um you guys want to hear how natalie portman looks back on her time as padme sure why not i mean is Um, it relevant she says i haven't shown my kids the movies yet i think it's so weird for them to think of me as anything other than their mom they've seen the recent star wars movies that i'm not in It, it feels really lucky to be a part of something that's every child's imaginary world okay so she kind of tiptoes around it (laughs) You know what? The the prequels have a special place in my heart now. I hate the sequels. Did you yeah. see the meme I sent you? Uh, yes, I did, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's it. I uh, will see you guys next week with Spider-Man 2, right? Yep, Spider-Man yeah. 2. I'm excited. All right, I'll see you guys later. See ya. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Iron Coop Fights Movies. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, review our podcast on iTunes so that we can spread the show around. To contact the show, you can reach us at theironcoob at gmail.com and on Instagram at theironcoob. Join us for another edition of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. <laughs> <laughs>